All right, what's up, guys? Nito here, and welcome back to another episode of Noteworthy Interactions. So today I am playing a Seismic Trap of Swells Saboteur. So Seismic Trap of Swells is one of the new Transfigured Gems, and it's basically a different version of Seismic Trap, which has a much shorter cooldown. So it's got 0.75 second base cooldown and six charges. Um... However, it's not a duration skill anymore. It no longer pulses multiple times at a one second interval and instead just releases one big burst of waves. Um, and it does have like multiple overlapping areas and you can see it by default releases three waves and then it gets plus one from quality. So I'll show you what it looks like just on its own. And um, basically you throw out one trap and when it goes off, second so it's got four areas right and they're pretty far apart so there's not a like it, it, it's kind of random but like there's not a huge amount of overlap um just from the base gem so i think a lot of people kind of maybe kind of discounted this gem a bit um it's actually better than it seems as long as you can scale quality so we are using a Crest of Desire with 50% quality, and then an Ashes of the Stars with 30% quality, so that's plus 80, so 100% quality total on our Seismic Trap of Swells, and now you can see it releases 8 waves instead of 3. So when we throw out 1, it's going to have many more overlaps, as we'll see. So yeah, so and it, it has a pretty gigantic AoE, so it hits pretty much the entire screen, and... Um, the other nice thing about Crest of the Desire is it makes socketed skills deal double damage. So it's just 100% chance to deal double damage, which is obviously very strong. Um, and then it also has plus eight to the level of socketed gems. And when you add the plus one from Ashes of the Stars um, and at some additional levels from like Cold Iron Point, which is plus three, and then our Dark Seer Scepter is plus two. So we actually have a I'm going to put this back on. It's actually a level 35 gem. And because it's a spell, it scales pretty well with gem levels. Um, and so it's getting quite a bit of flat physical damage from just that. And then, obviously, it's a one link, though. And most trap skills, you want to be able to throw multiple traps at a time. And so that's why we use Sunblast. Because we can't use Cluster Trap or um, Multi-Trap support. Uh, again, since it's the one link. So we use Sunblast, which throws two additional traps. However, it makes it so that traps cannot be triggered by enemies. And so enemies stepping on your traps does nothing. Instead, you have to wait for the trap duration to run out. So you want a Sunblast with as close to 75% reduced trap duration as possible. And that's going to reduce the base 4 second trap duration to 1 second, or close to 1 second. So you throw it out. You wait one second and then boom the entire screen explodes basically so that's kind of the build we're we're working with and since we're doing um pure physical damage we can use cold iron point as i showed before um which makes you deal no el elemental damage but that doesn't matter because we're doing physical damage and because we're doing physical damage we can also impale with the entropic devastation gloves which is going to make our crits apply impale um, and give us a bunch of increased effect of impales inflicted with spells. Ideally, you're going to want uh, a pair of these with some spell base crit corruption on there. Uh, you can get up to like 0.8 spell base crit um, because seismic trap with swells has a point or has a 5% base crit chance, which is pretty low. So you kind of want some extra sources of um, base crit. And I will say this character is only level 87. It's not a fully fleshed out complete character, but um, it has been working pretty well, and uh, I'll kind of show you a little bit what mapping looks like. This is a tier 16 atoll map. Um, but yeah, you kind of just run around, you just toss out traps, and the entire screen explodes, and it's very fun. And most things just kind of get one shot. Um, because again, you have like, you know, up to 24 hits overlapping. Um, usually you're not going to overlap every single hit unless it's like a really big uh, target. So some bosses have much larger uh, hitboxes, and so they're going to get hit by a lot more of the overlapping AoEs. But um, most things will just get hit with a couple of them, and even that is just enough to just kind of delete the whole screen. So 
Um, it's pretty, pretty good. It it works pretty well, um, especially for like strong boxes where you can kind of like pre-throw a trap and then pop it open, and in that one second duration um, that you're waiting for the trap to go off, it just kind of spawns all the enemies, and then they just get deleted. Um, it does take a little bit of getting used to that one second dura uh, delay from the Sunblast belt, but it's not too bad, honestly. Um, especially because this skill in particular is literally hitting the entire screen all at once. You don't really have to, like, throw it directly on top of where the you think the enemy is going to be, you know? Like, if the enemy is moving really quickly, even if they're, like, nowhere near where you threw the trap, um, it's fine, right? Like, you're probably going to hit them anyways. Uh, so it kind of gets around that downside a little bit. Um, and I will say, however, that Sizing Trap of Swells, while it's pretty good, there are probably other traps that are even better in this exact same setup. Um, one of them being Explosive Trap of Shrapnel, which, um, as you can see from quality, it scales additional uh, smaller explosions. So normally it has seven, then you get plus two from quality. And then if I slap this in our helmet, uh, it now has 20 smaller explosions. And Explosive Trap of Shrapnel also scales extremely well with levels. Not only does it scale the base damage, but it also scales the radius, and then it scales the number of explosions. So you can see, like, it went from 7 base number of explosions up to 10 with the additional levels, and then 10 from the additional quality, right? So if you want to see what that looks like, uh, it looks like this. That was a single trap throw. So it, it's very strong. Damage-wise, it's horrible to look at, and uh, I'm also using, like, I'm not really scaling it properly with this setup, but, like, it does kind of work. If it, it, You can kind of just, like, swap it in if you really want to, but, like, again, you literally can't see anything on the screen. It's kind of terrible, so uh, I don't know if I would recommend it exactly, but, like, yeah, it's really strong damage-wise. Um... Like, I'm using a cold iron point right now, which is cutting my damage in half because it's only 50% conversion skill, and cold iron point makes it so that you can't deal any elemental damage. So the half of that we're doing fire damage with right now is doing nothing. So, um, and it's still able to clear just fine. Um, so, yeah, that's an option. There's some other interesting options as well. Like, um, I was kind of messing around with some of the lightning traps. Uh, Lightning Trap of Overloading seems kind of insane because it's got a 100% base crit chance and uh, it scales area, like it hits additional areas, similar to Seismic Trap, it hits additional areas when you uh, scale the quality on it. So just kind of to show what that looks like. Um, although it's, oh wait, I guess I can't, hold on, I don't have enough mana. So, like, you can see there's a lot of, like, smaller overlapping um, AoEs in there. So it strikes 18 areas, which is pretty good. Uh, with this setup, it's not, like, it not, it wouldn't work because, again, obviously, Cold Iron Point can't do any damage. We're scaling, like, physical damage mostly, but um, this is the other Lightning Spire Trap um, of Zapping that gives the quality effect on this is not going to be as good with this setup so um you can get you can actually get up to a hundred percent chance to trigger an additional time so like just from quality it's 75 um but that doesn't work with sunblast unfortunately um because you're not actually triggering the trap you're just letting the trap duration run out and so then there's no trap left to re-trigger basically um so unfortunately, it doesn't quite work, but in theory, you could have a trap that has a 100% chance to trigger an additional time, and it 
Like, every time you throw a trap, it'd be like throwing two traps, essentially. Um, so that's another possible cool interaction, but... Yeah, I mean, they did actually, last patch, when they released all the Transfigured Gems, they also updated pretty much all of the quality effects of, um, of gems to make them generally much stronger. So there are quite a few skills in the game that scale extremely well with quality now. And I think the Crest of Desire Ashes setup is pretty undervalued. Um, like a lot of gems, you can get 100% more damage at a minimum, like just from quality. So like, it, you know, in this case, it, it, that's basically what we're getting. Um, like you go from four waves to eight waves. And so that means like basically twice as many overlaps, um, potentially. So it's a, a, a roughly equivalent to 100% more damage. Then and then on top of that, you're getting double damage guaranteed. And then on top of that, you're getting all the extra levels. So this is actually like probably better than a six link setup. Um, and especially because you're using Sunblast, which has two additional traps thrown without the downside of the like huge less damage multiplier that's normally on cluster trap support um so sunblast itself is like another 100 percent more damage or something you know something like that actually maybe even more um so it's a pretty good setup i would say especially for trap builds um the other thing we're doing so uh seismic trap of swells does have a cooldown and you can see the cooldown is 0.46 seconds right now um the base is 0.75 so we are a saboteur. We have light clockwork, which is giving us some cooldown recovery. And then we are also taking this cluster up here, trap cooldown recovery. And then it also gives an additional cooldown use. So we have like seven instead of six. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, you don't, you can't really scale trap throw speed at all um, because you're not going to really, like you don't really need the throw speed because like you're, Cooldowns are more of a limiting factor than your throw speed. But, I mean, if you did want to do the explosive trap version, um, that one doesn't have a cooldown, so you can just throw as many as you... You can basically throw as fast as you can, but you do have to be aware of your total number of traps that are on the ground, because if you overthrow, you're just going to be deleting traps without triggering them. Um, and because you can't have enemies triggering your traps, you do have to wait that one second duration, so, like, um you're not gonna be like you might be hitting your limit if you're throwing too fast basically if you do that setup um okay so the other interactions that we have going on here um we're using the new dark seer scepter and this thing got buffed pretty significantly in this uh in 3.24 and it's now a drop from one of the tier 17 like uber bosses or like pseudo uber bosses well, i don't know what we're calling this but yeah tier 17 boss drops this and basically it now does plus two to all spell skill gems just generically all skill or all spells plus two really good um it no longer has the condition that you need to be blinded in order for enemies blinded by you to have malediction um so now just like any enemy you blind it's going to deal 10 percent reduced damage and it's going to take 10 percent increased damage which is really strong especially when you combine it with saboteur because we have born in shadows and that's going to be like a blind aura effectively and you know all nearby enemies are blinded and so now all nearby enemies are also have malediction so it's extremely good on saboteur um you can use it on non-saboteur obviously because it does give you the 10 percent global chance to blind enemies on hit it's just not going to be as consistent and it's not going to be applying to things that you're not hitting right so it, I think it's actually a very, very strong weapon now. Um, and then on top of that, you also get plus two, up to plus two of maximum energy shield, max life, or max mana. Like there can be any combination of two of those. So I went for max ES and max life because I don't really care about mana on this build. But like if you're, say, playing a, an Archmage build or something and you want max mana, you can get that too. Um, so it's very strong. Highly recommend Checking this weapon out, it's very good, especially for Sabo. Um, and then we're also doing a Profane Proxy setup. And Profane Proxy is going to change one of the auras from your Skitterbots into um, a Curse Aura instead. And I'm using Enfeeble right now. And the great thing about this ring is that unlike using Blasphemy support or 
you know, hex, you know, like hex touch or like other, basically most methods of applying curses automatically have a significant downside in terms of the curse effect. So like Blasphemy Aura has like, I don't know, it's like a 30% less curse effect or something like that. Um, but this ring does not. You get around that. So you get the full effect of your curse. And it's very strong, especially for Enfeeble, because Enfeeble is going to give you... And it's going to make enemies have reduced accuracy rating, which is going to stack with your blind. Um, so enemies have much less chance to hit you. And then on top of that, they're also dealing significantly less damage. And that kind of works well with the Malediction Aura as well. So you have kind of like these stacking, reduced damage, less damage dealt, and then also um, stacking less accuracy. And then we are also running Dread Banner, which is another less accuracy aura. Uh, so between all of those things and then like running Grace, you know, like I have like 22k evasion right now. And, you know, that's only 73% chance to evade, which is pretty good, but it's not, you, it's not capped, right? But with all of these auras and stuff, it should be much closer to the evasion cap um, because you're just reducing enemy uh, evasion or enemy accuracy by just so much. So I think that's a pretty strong setup. And then um, our skitter bots are also, we're, so I'm disabling the chilling aura, but we still got the shocking aura, right? And uh, I have anointed on my amulet high voltage, which is giving a 100% increased crit chance against shocked enemies. So um, that kind of helps make up for the low crit chance, low base crit chance on seismic. Uh, you do have have to invest quite a bit into um, into some crit chance on the tree. Um, so high voltage is up there. And some of the really, like, one of the coolest things we're doing with this build is this setup right here. And so we are utilizing the new Parandus Pact Jewel. And this jewel comes in a bunch of different varieties. So the one I have gives 6% increased fizz damage, but there's variants for all the different damage types. So you can do fire damage or cold damage or whatever. Um, there's also a variant for chaos res. There's a variant for crit chance. There's a variant for like life, energy shield, mana, like you can get most basic stats on this jewel. And it just makes it so that all of the small passive skills, actually even the notables also, um, will give you that 6% increased physical damage, which on its own in most jewel sockets is not amazing. Um, just because like on average for most jewel sockets, you're hitting maybe like 10 or 15 things in the radius at most. However, if you use it in this center area with Scion, because it's so densely packed, you can hit quite a lot more. And then it combines really nicely with Unnatural Instinct, which is going to grant you all of these small passives in this small radius. Um, but it doesn't give you any of the uh, notables. But and, and then like all of the ones that you've actually allocated are going to grant nothing. So like these don't actually grant mana because I allocated them, but these ones are effectively allocated automatically. And they're also now granting extra physical damage, right? Um, so it's super strong and you can even see all of the stats that this jewel is giving me. And all the way at the bottom there is giving me 225% increased physical damage just from this one jewel slot in this spot. And it's mainly because of Parandus Pact. Like, if I take that out, now... Wait. Now it only gives 51% physical damage. Which is, on a, honestly, very good already. Um, but yeah, so Parandus Pact right there, just from Unnatural, is giving, uh, like, 170 fizz damage, right? And that's not even including all of this other stuff that's outside of this small radius. So we're actually getting probably close to like three or four hundred percent increased physical damage um, from from that jewel, and then we're combining it with Might of the Meek, which is giving fifty percent increased effect of the small passives in in this large radius. So there's a significant overlap between all three in this area. So like all of these are giving 9% fizz damage instead of the like 6% fizz damage that these ones are. Um, and then this is also boosting up like, you know, these life nodes are giving 6% max life instead of four. 
Um, these spell suppression nodes, spell, suppre uh, spell suppression and inva evasion nodes are giving 6% instead of 3, um, or instead of 4, I mean, and a bunch more evasion, and then also the 9 fist damage. So it makes like investing into some of these things a lot more worth it. However, you can't take any of the notables. So like the notables are basically disabled. Um, so it's a slight downside there, but you can kind of work around that. And uh, I think this setup in the center here is just really, really strong overall. Uh, you could also swap out Might of the Meek and use something like a Timeless Jewel instead, because Timeless Jewels are also going to uh, like add some stats to this, some of the small nodes. You could even do like a Glorious Vanity Jewel here, which is going to convert all of the small nodes into like random nodes. Um, would be hard to get everything to work for your builds, but a, a bunch of them are probably going to be pretty strong. And, you know, you just get like a lot of value out of just picking up a bunch of small nodes because you're going to hit Grandis Pact and just like the converted small nodes. And then like the whole unnatural instinct there as well is very valuable. So something to consider for most builds. Um, and I will also say one thing that's pretty sick. Uh, I have negative 119% chaos res, right? Because, like, I have minus 59% chaos res from our map from one of the altars. And then I also just have no chaos res in my build currently. Um, but if I swap in Brandis Pact, ta-da! Now I'm overcapped on chaos res. Uh, that's how insanely powerful it is in this one spot. Like, literally one jewel with no chaos res anywhere else in the entire build. And negative, negative 59 from the map itself, like, we're still overcapped on Chaos Res, which is just insane. So, like, super, super, super powerful for a lot of builds there. And it's pretty flexible in terms of, like, what stat you want to actually get um, from the jewel in that spot. So, would highly recommend for a lot of different builds. Um, that's definitely something to check out. And the rest of the tree is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, just some life evasion and aura stuff. Life over here, we're taking the Fizz Mastery that gives chance to ignore enemy Fizz damage reduction because, again, we're pure Fizz build. Got some crit, some trap crit, ghost dance, whatever. I mean, it's nothing, nothing special. And again, the build's not even complete because we're only level 87. Um... But I think that there's a lot of potential, especially with this setup here. And just like the sheer amount of burst you get from Seismic Trap Swells is a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the build. Um, but yeah, and also I'm using Tinker Skin currently. It's not that great for the build, but it does have cooldown recovery rate for throwing traps. Um, but you don't really benefit from a lot of the other things because all the other effects are when the trap is triggered by an enemy, but our traps are never triggered by enemies because of Sunblast. So uh, you don't get the Frenzy Charge or the Phasing or the Life and Energy Shield Recovery. So it's actually not that great, but um, I haven't bothered switching to another chest. You know, I haven't crafted another chest yet, basically. So um, not that important to build, but I will mention that. Um, and, the, you know, without the cooldown recovery, let's see, we're at 0.5. So it, it only brings us down... A tiny bit to 0.46 seconds so it's good but it's not insane and i don't even have cooldown recovery on my boots or anything currently so we do uh can scale we can scale that cooldown recovery a little bit further down uh, if we want to so um yeah that's pretty much the builds seismic travis wells it is honestly a very fun build because you just like literally one shot the entire screen um so there it is. Yep. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.